fast press. There you go. Woo! Yep. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I printed one on the back. I printed one on the back. Damn. So I have a collection. I so did that. I have a collection of those. Yeah. What did we expect to happen, honestly? So this will be with me for a while. That's good. <laughs> In today's world, true craftsmen are an endangered species, as society seems to have forgotten the importance of skilled labor. I'm determined to prove the trades are in fact alive and well by finding the next generation of artisans, craftsmen, and trade workers that are doing their part to keep the phrase American made in this country's vocabulary. I'm Tay Whiteside, and this is Behind the Craft. John Reburn is a graphic designer and vintage printmaker that practices his discipline here in Roanoke, Virginia. I've known John for the better part of a decade because I grew up working at Black Dog Salvage, an architectural salvage and antique store that he has a consignment booth in under the name Appalachia Press. I've always seen his work walking through the store, so when we got the opportunity to come film with him for a day, we had to jump on it. The crew and I grabbed our gear, drove down to the building he shares with Press Press merch, and shoehorned ourselves into his beautiful workspace to see what we could capture of John's amazing craft. We are in my super secret studio. Um, I'm John Reburn and I'm a letterpress printer. Uh, I have a card line that we sell. There's 300 designs in the card line and that keeps us alive. That is, is probably our, our number one bread and butter. I grew up at Smith Mountain Lake, which is not far from here and Frederick, Maryland. And so when I, when I took off and went to college in Arizona and then on to LA for years, I always knew that I would return, but you, when you return, you actually wanna bring something back. You, you wanna do something with it. And so I had the really good fortune of moving my last design company into this old building. And there was the, uh, one of the best letterpress printers, her name was Claudia Laub. She was in that same building. And I have always wanted to be a printmaker. She, she was the, the through line for me to that this could actually be a career. LA can have 12 letterpress printers and, and it'll, everybody's good. But when you go to a smaller town, it, there's not enough business. If you're considering just being the, the local printer, there's not enough business. So I chose Rona because we didn't have one. Your effort in a smaller community has a bigger impact. There are so many good people doing good work here in this region that I want to make I want to make sure that it's seen. I want to I want to promote it. I want people to get it. But Appalachia, the name felt so right with this machinery, with this process, with the age and the time and the place. You you mentioned that you've always been a maker, but mm -hmm. was there a different part of you you felt you could express with printmaking once you found it? Like It's always been that attraction to print. So the physicality of printmaking, it was my love. It, I really felt it. I mean, with letterpress, it's layers. It's, it's color on top of color on top of color. Um, you have to be able to figure out that puzzle, but you have to figure that out early on in the design process, how it's gonna be cast, how it's gonna print. That stuff is exciting to me, but then once you put it on the press and that physical work, that's the joy of it. All right, John. Well, there's only so much I can learn about your business without wanting to get involved to yes. some degree. So what do you want to make today? You got something you're already making that I can... We're going to do a St. Patrick's Day card today. Okay. Oh, that is fantastic. And how beautiful. All right, we've got our paper. What's next? So. The setup is the most important. It's very crucial to get everything set up. I'm gonna draw in the basics of where things need to land. Okay. And they tend to have a, a, a purpose for being at a certain height, like with, when it's on the shelf, the artwork um, needs to sit up. Because that bottom like quarter is covered, it's is covered buried by in the, the card below it. This is cast yep. and you know made for the press. There's all different sizes from, you know, it oh, goes wow. from yeah, the look at that. 10 by 12, 12 by 18s, 10 by 15s. There's a chase for every size press. Uh, this is the key. This turns, it expands. Oh, look at and that. And it pushes the wood together, holds everything in place. And you know the classic measure twice, cut once? Oh, if not three or four times. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then all of these little pieces of wood, like Jenga, 
Look at that. Fit together. Yeah, and so you just start building up. And you start building up. So we come over here. Okay. I always look at uh, the personality of, of building this. Everybody has their own way of doing it. So this is how I do it. But So we're going to give that a shot. Let's see what it looks like. So all this is good. This is the first color. So I don't want to do too much of an impression because we really want to hit the second color with the, with the really fine lines. We want to hit that. But that's perfect for a first color. Awesome. Good. So for clover, I want to do something bright underneath because we're really going to cover it with a darker color. I'm hit it with that darker so green later. It tells you 15 parts yellow, one part process blue. Okay. Okay. It really is just a batter of like three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I it's, see. It's really a basic system. Just find a standard and repeat it. Right. So it'll mix. It really is mixing the color. Yeah. I love how it turns the turntable every time. And then with the same sort of, look at that, <laughs> never really used. Yeah, this is a full can of ink. Full can of ink. And just a. And then we go one. It's, it's surprising it to me how fast it, it spread it evenly it across the table. But being slightly impatient, right? I help spread it along. I take a little finger, and I always just press it on white, and that's a nice color. That's that is very close to what we wanted. Yeah, I like it. I'm comfortable with it. Yeah, that is almost bang on. It's not too much ink. It's not too wet. Pop this back into place. Let's get, let it ink itself. And it just takes one or two passes right there. A couple times over. Yeah. And then we're going to see what we've got. And that looks good to me. Oh, look at that. That feels readable. That feels good. Yeah, look, you can read everything in your logo. Everything is there. You make the chaos of this machine seem pretty calm. But if I were to jump in here, I would almost 100% think it's moving too fast. Right, right. I want to see everyone. I want to. I want to know how it's going. I think there's an attention to detail when you're sitting here doing it. Yes. Well, yeah, you become really intimately familiar with what you're creating and what you're looking for. Let's move on to color two. That's so cool. So I'm adding a little bit more blue. And we're gonna let the rollers do their thing. Just seeing this on a rack in a store, it's so hard to understand what has actually gone into creating the texture right. and the cut, the depth. And you're missing the the. Uh, I illustrated that earlier this week. And yeah, um, all the little all that illustrated, and then had it sent off for casting. So after we print today, I'll go home later, fold them leave them, price them, and they'll be in the store tomorrow. Right. Hot um, off the press, as they say. They will get shipped out immediately. Nothing has changed in, in like the beginning of print 500 years ago. These all basically print the same way. There, there's no real change in technology until the current 70s, 80s, it, when it became digital, when it became easier to print. Printing processes today, it's a surface print. It's ink on the top of paper. It's, um, it, it, it is quick and relatively inexpensive. Um, no interest for me. So I love the fact that these machines actually, uh, you can use better paper, thicker paper. Uh, it digs into the paper when it presses. There's a beauty to this. There's a physicality to it. There's a talent to it. When email hit, everybody said it was the death of letterpress was going to be over. It only solidified there are people who write letters. There are people who, who want correspondence. There are people who send thank you notes. And then there's not. It didn't really change my business. I didn't lose business. It just really got rid of, you know, the middle ground. And it just, the same people still write, which 
I love. You know, it's, it's, a, it's called communication, people. When all we get in the mail now is bills. Our paper is so beautiful that when you get one of those little packages in the mail, when you get that envelope, it, it's remarkable. It's a gift in the mail. It's so, so wonderful that um, I think that's what separates it. I think uh, sending a thank you note today is a remarkable thing. So the name of the series is? Behind the Craft. Right, yeah. so let's do uh, craft in wood type. So okay. if you could put, pick out the C-R-A-F-T. Got it. And I'm gonna do the metal type back here. So everything is backwards, so we'll do C R A F T. So then we're just building this into place. And there's a certain amount of space that you can that will be taken up by this, yeah. right? And then you drop the bottom in drop first. It in. There's right? a catch at the bottom if nice. you line it. Yep. C. There we go. And then lift watch your this fingers up. and go. Yes. That's spring loaded. Okay. Yep. There gotcha. we go. Locked in. All right, so we can advance. So I would give it, you can throw the brake and let's do, um, and hand turn that just okay. to give it our shot to see how, um, what the pressure's like. Yeah, no, trust me, I'm cool with slow <laughs> right now. Okay, keep going, push, 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 because it's going to bite. Oh, I see. There we go. Look at that. Oh, how good is that? Unbelievable. Now, you want to turn the motor on or do you want to do it by hand? I kind of both. Okay. Let me maybe do a, a few more and okay. I'll kind of run through the motions. Yeah. Oh. I'm a little nervous, honestly, but. Um, Confidence, come on. There's, yeah, I, I feel good though, because there's not a whole lot of, of variables. This is an on-off switch really, and that's an on-off switch. Absolutely. And this right. is either in or out. Right. So it's really right. all you're working with. And it's this motion, right? It's that. Bang, no. bang. Yep. yep, yep. All right, I'm gonna hand crank and sort of just go for it a few times. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I love that font. Just cannot beat wood type. It's beautiful. Oh, this is fun. Amazing. I think let's try the motor. Okay. So throw the brake. Now you want to get a look. When you turn it on, you want to get a feel okay. of the rhythm. You've always got the brake, not to print, but yeah, right. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and load so we don't do yeah, that. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let it go one rotation. To get up to. To get the speed. Mm -hmm. Give that poor antique motor a break. There you go. Okay. Okay. It's a fast press. There you go. Woo! Yep. Ah, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I printed one on the back. I printed one on the back. <laughs> damn. So I have a collection. I so did that. I have a collection of those. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> what did we expect to happen, honestly? But if I were to jump in here, I would almost 100% think it's moving too fast. Right, right. I change this maybe every three months, so this will be with me for a while. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> and to think I made a clean one for you. Oh, there we that go. was foolish, wasn't it? So good. Oh, man. No, I know, but you see the rhythm? You get in the rhythm. Yeah. It'll happen. One thing I noticed I did immediately was when I grabbed it, I grabbed right on the lettering. Oh, and so when I set it down, right. my funk, my that's finger stuck a little. That's and I was absolutely like, oh, true. No, you always want to grab to the white space, you know, so that you don't have. Yep. Right. But these are live and learn. This is all the like, you'll get it. This is exciting. It's it, it's, it like is. my heart's my heart's pumping. It's good. Yeah. Get the music going. Oh yeah. And then yeah. just get in it. It's good. All right, here we go. Okay. Jitters out, honestly. <laughs> okay, that's off. Okay. We're gonna do a full rotation. Yep, yep. All right. Throw it. Yep. And that's why fanning that paper out makes it easier to grab. Oh, I went no, lefty. Let it, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yep. Oh, no. Yep, no. <laughs> See, it's a fast Oh yeah, I got the last yeah. one. I got the last one. It's set fast. Woo! This is for me. So I'm impressed that you actually motor through there's that. There's a lot going yeah. on there. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah I, I feel good though, because there's not a whole lot of, of variables. But this is why you can't talk. It's why you can't, you, I, I was trying not to speak while your hands were in there. You, you can't talk, you can't be distracted, you can't drink. Not at all. You, you really yeah. just have to be focused on what you're doing. 
as a safety issue. It's what it is. Oh, of course. But how about this? All you you walked away with a few little thank you notes. That was exhilarating, genuinely exciting. I think it's exhilarating. And to think about that this is what I do for a living. Yeah, that's what, every day. I come oh, in I, and produce and I, make something. I get it now. It's good. You sure you don't need an extra hand around here? I always need an extra hand. <laughs> well, John, I appreciate your time letting me. Uh, this was one of the more fun things great? I've done in a while. Excellent. Thank hey, you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks Careful. for loving it. I love it. I'm glad. I love that you love it. I think it comes down to handwriting. Um, it, so many times when you get an email, it's misconstrued. The, the language, how you've said it, there is nothing. In, in a handwritten note, you communicate through the way it's written. You, you get a feeling from it. I have boxes of letters uh, from my grandmother. When I went to college, she would write all the time. But her handwriting was so exceptional, and it was just her handwriting. That personality comes through with the handwriting. There's emotion. There's feeling. You get it. And it's a big deal. I think that's a really big deal. It, it really is, uh, it's my love, it's my life, and I don't have, um, I, don't have a, I don't have a lot of free time. I do this because I love it, and I'm always doing it. So even when I'm out, it, it, you know, out in a normal day, I'm always looking, it's a visual thing, you're always searching for the next idea, you're always looking for something that's gonna be the next print job. So it's a 24-hour it's, it's love for me. I do it all the time.